Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is currently 12.09 a.m. on this freezing cold <laughs> Thursday going into Friday morning. It is currently 33 degrees outside and dropping. It's really cold outside tonight. I just took the dogs outside and they didn't even want to run around that much. And I just woke up and I feel very rested. I went to bed about, I was trying to figure out what time I fell asleep. I think I've slept for about, I slept for about three hours. Um, Cause I was talking to Valerie right before I laid down for a little while. And as I was falling asleep, Alex was playing his video game, and I said, or his video game. <laughs> That's so funny that I said that, because Valerie and I were just talking about, she said something, we were talking about watching um, Christmas cartoons, and I said, oh, I watched Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer today, and she said that she had just watched Frosty, and she said, I taped it, and I, and I started laughing. I said, Alex always laughs at me, because I always say, like, I'm gonna tape the show, or I taped the show, and he's like, did you tape it on your, um, your VCR tape, and I'm always like, no, on my Betamax. <laughs> but anyway, I have a little Diet Coke with me here today. Uh, so we were talking about the shows that we're gonna watch, because on Sunday, Frosty and, maybe it's Rudolph, but I think it's Frosty and Charlie Brown are on TV on Sunday. So, Charlie Brown is hard to find online. I think I have it. I think somebody gave me the whole box set. Tanya did years ago with like all of the different holiday specials. But I don't even know if we have a working VCR in our house right now in our, or a DVD player in our house, in all honesty. So, um, I pre, what do you call it, recorded? I don't know what you call it. I uh, planned for it to record on Sunday, Frosty and Charlie Brown's Christmas. But Frosty, you can watch on YouTube. Today, I watched Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer on YouTube. Well, I have like 10 minutes left of it. Bumbles bounce. Um, <laughs> I love that show so much, that claymation show. So, let me just tell you guys, okay? I woke up yesterday at what, like 4.30 in the morning to go vlog, and I stayed up until I just laid down to take a nap. I got up and I vlogged, and then I listened to some of my audiobook. I'm trying to get all these Christmas audiobooks done in time for Christmas, and I just don't think it's gonna happen, so I'm gonna have to go through and pick which ones are gonna be my favorites out, because I just don't think that I'm going to be listening to two and three books a day. I just don't think it's going to happen. Um, so I listened to some of my audiobook, and then I got home and I mean, it was about like seven o'clock or so. It was like a, maybe a little bit after that because I drove around for quite a bit listening to my audiobook, And I was like wide awake because I had, um, you know, slept for like almost five hours or something like that. I was like wide awake and so I um I was like I'm just gonna stay up and get some stuff done because I knew Alex was getting ready to leave for work <laughs> so Alex got up and I could hear him upstairs and I was like putting my vlog together um so I could like render it and then like upload it to YouTube so Alex left to go to work and I was like, I'm gonna go run some errands because I had all these errands to run. And I knew I had a hair appointment at two o'clock. So at that point, my plan was that I just wanted to stay up until two o'clock, well, two, was that 2.15? I just wanted to stay up until 2.15 and get everything that I could possibly get done before then. And then after that, I could lay down and relax um, until Alex got home from work. And I was like, okay, so I went to the vet because the vet gave us capsules instead of tablets on um, Tucker's Vet Medin, so I had to go and exchange that. They were so nice about the whole thing. And interestingly enough, I didn't know this, that the capsules are 
um, a lot more expensive than the tablets. And they had charged us accidentally twice for the capsules. They had, them in, they had a, us in the system as like needing capsules. And so um, they gave me like a hundred dollar refund on my credit card, which was really nice. It was really nice because this is how <laughs> this kind of stuff works out for me. It always balances itself out. Later in the day, I went to Costco, and when I was checking out, I owed my membership fees, which were $120. <laughs> so it's like they're <laughs> it just completely balanced out. So anyway, um, what was I going to say? Okay, so I went to the vet, and then I went to the post office, and I picked up a bunch of packages, and... Um, they're sitting on the kitchen counter because I was going to show those in um, a video sometime this weekend, either on my Peter Does Stuff channel or over here. Um, I literally have probably 30 or 40 Christmas cards right now from that were in my post office box that I have started going through, but I really want to just sit down and open them one by one while I'm like watching a Christmas movie. I also want to say that Matt, who is part of the Volgarinos group, he also owns Mac Matt... I, I hope I'm not pronouncing this incorrectly. Motive Candles. And he sent me a bunch of his candles a couple years ago. Really, really nice guy. And apparently he's one of the vloggerinos. Because he reached out to me today. And he sent me a picture of this big package. And he was like, hey, just want to let you know that me and the vloggerinos put this together for you for Christmas. And I was like, oh my god, that is so sweet. Um, so I'm excited about that, you guys. So thank you for anybody that was involved in that. I really, really appreciate that. It was nice. Um, so that was kind of unexpected. And then, um, what did I do after that? Oh, then I went and did a crumble cookie review. I was wanting to go to Costco, um, because we, I needed to get toilet paper and paper towels, but I knew that they didn't know. I look, had looked it up. They didn't open until 10. So I was like trying to like, you know, by that point, it was like 8.45 or something like that. So I went to Crumble Cookies and I did um, my review at Crumble Cookies, whatever time that was. And then when I was done, I still had, I think it was like 9.30 or 9.20 or something. I don't know. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go home and I'm going to upload this video and then check on my vlog to see if it's done rendering and then upload that. And I got home, and like on my way home, it started pouring down rain, like torrential downpours. And I was like, seriously? Like to the point where I didn't even wanna get out of my car. Oh, hold on a second. So you know how I said that, if you watch my vlog from yesterday, I said that um, like the windstorm had blown like our recycling down the street. <laughs> Well, when I woke up this morning, and I thought it was like one piece that was in my neighbor Laura's yard, when I woke up this morning and I was like, well, not when I woke up, but when I left to go to, um, what do you call it, the vet this morning, in the light of day, I could see it, and there were many pieces. <laughs> there were many pieces that were like, there was like three pieces in her yard, and it, just, it was a mess. It was, and they were big pieces too. So, of cardboard. So I had to like walk out there. Well, when I decided to do it was when it was raining and I'm walking out there in my plastic Birkenstock sandals and my jeans are like soaking wet on the bottom of it. It was such a mess. And I'm walking through mud and grass to get these cardboard pieces. Because I was like, I've got to get these and pick these up. And then I was picking up all of this stuff that I picked up some gals it was an Amazon envelope, and it wasn't even mine, but it had blown into the street. <laughs> I was like, oh, well. Oh, well. I'm picking up for her. So, um, yeah, but that was um, up to that point. And then I um, filmed a bunch of videos. I filmed videos on all of my channels. And I just kind of took my time doing that, which was really nice today. You know, I did not go to Costco. when I, I thought I was going to go to Costco right then at like 10 o'clock, but I didn't because it was pouring down rain. So um, I waited till it, the rain died down a little bit, and then I brought in all of my stuff, all the packages I've been sent, and some other stuff in my backseat. And then I filmed all my videos, 
and then um, and uploaded them and had them ready to go. And then, which felt really nice, but I don't want to get up at 4.30 in the morning every morning to have that much time to get stuff done. I felt very achieved this morning. I felt very like I had accomplished a lot. I felt very accomplished. Um, and then, what was I going to say? I uh, went to get my hair cut. I got my holiday do. She kept on like shaving up here and I said, hey, hey, I said, because this is like the shortest we've gone in a long time, you know? And I said, I feel like I'm starting to look a little bit like Max. I know, okay, it's not done now, but it did look nice earlier. And I said, I feel like I'm looking a little bit like Max Hedrum on the side. And she started laughing. So anyway, we talked about her daughter and her daughter, what her daughter's getting for Christmas and all that stuff. I love my hairstylist. I've gone to her forever. Um, and then after that, I came home and finished finalizing my videos because some of them were uploading while I was gone. And so, and then I, um, and then after that, I went to Costco, which this was weird. Five o'clock, because that's what time I got to Costco. Well, I left the house at like five o'clock. So 5.10 or something like that on Thursday. It really wasn't that crowded. I couldn't believe it. Like, there were people there. It was definitely, you know, not empty, but it wasn't super crowded by any means. And, um, like when I was done, I just went to the self checkout. And I mean, I literally, there was no line or anything, and I checked right out, which was really cool. So, yeah. Um, and I got paper towels, toilet paper. People were really friendly in Costco today too. Like not just the people that work there, but they were as well. But like people that were shopping in there were super friendly too. This one woman was laughing because she's like, I almost put my milk in your cart. But like I rarely ever walk around. Like I always go in there with an intention. Like I need to get this or I need to get that. Like I mean I was telling my cousin Caroline. I talked to Caroline earlier on the phone today. She's like dying that I got up so early. She's like you got up before me. I'm like I know Caroline. I said well I thought I didn't want to call you too early. I said but I know that you get up at like 6 o'clock in the morning. She goes oh I don't do that anymore. I said okay. Um, so she was like but I have to get up because of the dogs and you know, so they have three dogs and, um, but anyway, oh, I was telling Caroline, I said, yeah, I've got to go to Costco. I've got to go to Costco. And so she was saying something that Mike, she needed from Costco and Mike didn't pick up white vinegar. And she's like, I don't know why he didn't just get it at Costco. And I'm like, so I said something about family size stuff. Cause like, it's not like, I mean, Alex and I are two people. We don't need a family size, you know, ketchup and stuff like that. I do think that like Costco and Sam's club are great for people that are like big families and raising kids and all that kind of stuff. But for like Alex and I, sometimes like the stuff is like, sure. I think it's a great deal on some things like grocery items and whatever, but it's like, we don't, we don't need that much of it. Do you know what I mean? Um, I mean, we just don't need that much. It's like their K cups for coffee. It's like 300 cups or 200 cups or something like that, which is so funny. So, um, what was I gonna say? It is so hot in this car. So yeah, I uh, I have to say though that it was funny because when I was walking around, well, oh, I called my sponsor right before. Like, on my way there, I was talking to my sponsor on the phone, checking in with her, and so I kind of, like, I just, like, walk. I feel like there's something in my nose. I, like, had walked straight up when I came in and walked right, like, because when I was talking to her, I said, I said, let me talk and finish this really quick. Let me finish the story with you. And I was like, as I'm standing right by the huge bottles of wine is what I said to her. So I like passed the liquor and then I walked into like the, where like the deli is and the baked goods. And Alex loves those miniature chocolate chip cookies. So I got Alex some of those miniature chocolate chip cookies. And it reminded me of like when we were on lockdown because Alex and I had gone to Costco and spent like $300 at Costco getting all kinds of groceries and stuff. And, um, and so 
like I started like kind of missing like having tons of stuff in our refrigerator and our pantry although that was like ridiculous overload of how much stuff we had we never even needed that much stuff but we did use every single thing well not every single thing but I mean with the exception of probably four soups I mean and I'm being honest like we used like everything that we bought and I can remember I would buy like well I bought these huge packages of that Havarti cheese like slices and then bread and Every day I was eating cheese sandwiches and these special soups and stuff like that. And so, um, I was like looking through the food, which was dangerous because I bought the chocolate chip cookies for Alex. And then I bought this like tray of cheese slices and it was like Havarti, Gouda. They were like the little cheese slices, you know? And it was like this like party tray, like this big. So I got that. And then I was like looking through everything. I mean, I could have bought all this stuff. I almost bought a macaroni and cheese for Alex because Alex and I love the Costco mac and cheese. It's so good. And you just cook it in the microwave for 45 minutes. This thing will not, I don't understand what's going on tonight with this. It just won't stay where I want it to. Um, yeah, I love that macaroni and cheese. And then, um, what else? So Alex and I love the macaroni and cheese. There was something else I was gonna buy him while I was in there. I can't remember what it was. But anyway, I was like texting him. Oh, I was gonna get hummus and that Stonebridge, like I think that's what they're called, those pita breads. And they're like cheaper in there because you get like a bigger, well obviously because it's Costco, but you get like a bigger container of them. I'm gonna try to fix this camera. Hold on a second, this camera is really distracting me. I know you guys are like, well, Peter, what's different than every other night? There's nothing different from every other night, but it's just starting getting crazy tonight. Um, so then I needed crackers for my cheese, of course. So a horse is a horse, of course, of course. Oh, I bought some kind of Christmas candy. Um, peppermint Christmas candy, chocolates, because I wanted some kind of chocolate in the house. Because, of course, I need that, right? And, um, and then I... something oh because I was like well he got chocolate chip cookies so I'm gonna get myself some chocolate I almost got these sea salt caramels that I think I've gotten before and I was gonna get and in like one of those huge containers of the peanut butter and pretzels because I love those so much but I was like you know what I don't think that um, I need to have that huge container around the house because I'll just eat all of it in like two days <laughs> so I didn't get that but um, Then I went and I, the only like cracker kind of thing I could find, I mean they had a lot, but it, they didn't have a lot, but they had a couple different things. But the only, they had like those pita um, chips, like Sally's or whatever. They're, oh, this camera, look at this. What is going on, you stupid thing? I wonder if I should have put it in the other way up. Well, oh well, it is what it is now. I don't love those pita chip things. And so, do you guys know what I'm talking about? I mean, they're not horrible, but I don't love them. <laughs> like, whenever we get hummus and take it over to his mom's house, I always, like, get a bag of that stuff. And I don't know why that's just our go-to for it. So, I really like those thin, thin pretzels. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? So, I got a bag of those. They had a bag of, like, the original flavor. And I got those. And then I got Alex a huge bag of Skinny Pop, because he loves that Skinny Pop stuff. And that was my Costco shopping, and then I walked right out, and um, and that was two hundred dollars because I had to renew our membership, and I wasn't happy about that. But it's whatever. We save a lot of money in a year, but you know what? I just remembered this. We got our check last year. So if you guys don't know, you get like a check every year for like like if you spend money at Costco you get like cash back and I think we got a check for like $49 last year and I think it's still sitting in I keep this area like with like gift cards and stuff like that and I think it's sitting in that area and I don't think we ever used it last year which is stupid um Maybe when Alex is off during the holidays. I asked him today, I said, now when is your last day? He said, I'm working through next Wednesday. And then I think he's gonna take the following week off. 
even though like he could work, I think he's still gonna take that time off. Um, or maybe not, I don't know. But it'll be fun. Maybe we could go to Costco one day and spend that. Because we haven't gotten this year, so I don't think check for that yet. But I feel like we would have by now. Because you usually get that. Like when you get. I think our renewal thing is like September or November. Or I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't matter. Anyway. Um, yeah, and you know what else? I realized the other day, because Alex always uses gift cards, and I always forget to use gift cards. Unless it's a gift card like Starbucks that you load onto your app. Like, I'll just come home and, like, I'll load that on my app, like, immediately. Um, well, not immediately, but, like, in the next day or two. I'll load it onto my app. Um, with gift cards, like, if it's, like, you have to go use it someplace, like, I forget, right? And so I keep them all. Well, for a long time, I kept them all in this, like, wood container um, in our little kitchen section there um, in the corner where my books and stuff are. I would keep them in there with like some of like jewelry and stuff that I had. Now, I, ha I bought this new thing um, and I bought it at where did I buy it? I think I bought it at Nordstrom Rack one day a while ago and it's like, it says bills on, it's like wooden and it says bills and then it says other things or something like that on there and I love it because it's like, keeps me organized. Um, and so like, in the front, to the right, I have, like, um, gift cards. And I have, like, six or seven gift cards in there. And, I mean, and they're none of them, like, hugely, like, expensive gift cards. There's nothing like that. But I have, like, a Barnes & Noble gift card for, like, 20 some dollars. And I have, like, a Cheesecake Factory gift card that I think Alex's mom gave us, um, for, like, 30 bucks. And then I have, like, a Crate & Barrel gift card for, like, 30 or 50 bucks and Nordstrom Rack. I have two Nordstrom Rack ones that Liliana and Carlos gave me. One for my birthday and one for Christmas. And I haven't used either one of them. And I have those like in there. Um, and I haven't used them. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to use these this week. I'm going to buy some stuff with this. <laughs> I'm going to use these. Because I was talking to a friend about that today. It's like, you know, I know cash and gift certificates are easy. But the thing for me is that it's like, well, first of all, I just feel like it's really impersonal. I know that's what a lot of people want. I know kids want, you know, you know like high school kids and college kids and all that kind of stuff. I know that they want cash. I just personally feel like it's really impersonal, right? And I seem to always get cash. Get, well, I don't give cash to people, but gift, cert gift cards... I usually buy gift cards for people that don't really care that much about getting a gift for Christmas because I'll ask somebody, like, well, what do they want? And they're like, oh, I don't even know. So I typically get them a gift card or I'll, you know, like my my husband, Alex, is somebody that he actually really enjoys gift cards because then he'll get online and he'll, like, he saves them, first of all, like Zara and ASOS and stuff like that. He loves those, you know, stores. So he'll get online and he'll, like, like, before, like, the summer, like, two months before the summer, he'll go through and he'll, like, buy everything that's on sale, you know, and he really uses them and whatever he loves them, but for me, like, I either forget that I have them, or it forces me to, like, go to that store that I had no intention of going to to begin with and spending more money, because I'll go there to buy something, and then I see three other, you know what I mean? Like, so, for me, it's always, um, I don't know why in my head I'm like, my Barnes & Noble gift certificate I'm going to use on a graphic novel. I think I'm going to read this orange manga. I brought it out the other day. Um, I was using it to like... I can't remember why I brought it out. I think to put my camera on for something that I was doing. I just was using it as kind of like a tripod. And um, I had lifted it up during the live stream. And somebody said, oh, that book is, that book orange is so good. And I got it years and years and years ago. Um, There's like three of them in the set. Because I saw all these booktubers reviewing it. And I really wanted to get it. And I couldn't find it anywhere. And I ended up ordering it online. And then I never read it. And I was like dying to have it. So I think I'm going to read it. Um, but I want to get like another graphic novel to read. 
I really enjoy graphic novels. Well, in January, Alice Oseman's newest one, the Heartbreaker series, comes out. I can't wait to get that in the mail. So, what was I saying about all that? Gift certificates, yeah. I don't really think that I have that many gift certificates to get this year. I have to get my um, cousin's husband something. And then, um, I'm going to get her one step son that's visiting. I'm going to get him a gift certificate to this golf place. That's like this big, or a gift card, to this golf, it's like Golf World USA or something like that. There's one right up the street from us. So it's, first of all, convenient to go to. She was like, anything golf. Well, somebody commented on my, on, under my vlog and said, get him, like, Titleist balls, blah, 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 blah. Well, I would, but he's flying here, and so I don't want to have to give him anything that's heavier, you know, to take home. So I'm going to get him a gift card to this golf place, because then he can buy something online if he wants to and whatnot. It feels later than it is outside. I just drove past Taco Bell, and they're like, um, their drive through is still open, and I'm like, that's so weird. Like, it feels like it's like 3 o'clock in the morning or something. <sighs> My battery is already at the halfway point. I can't believe it. So, I might change it up here in a second because I'm getting ready to... I'm going to go put, get on the interstate, drive north a little bit, and come back and listen to my audiobook. I'm not going to vlog forever tonight because um, I have vlogged really long the last couple, well, not really long, but longer than I usually do the last couple days. I think yesterday's was like an hour and 28 minutes or something like that. Maybe that was the day before. Um, and I'm going to let you guys catch up a little bit. Plus, I've been posting videos on a lot of my channels. And I know that it can be completely overwhelming to people that try to watch all of them, which I really appreciate. Um... <laughs> So yeah, what was I gonna say? Oh, I can't remember. Um, so Alex came home from work, and I was like, I'm really hungry, are you hungry? And I had everything done, everything put away. Um, it was so nice, I watched, I sprayed the Christmas, perfect Christmas spray in the house, and everything was so nice and homey, and made the Christmas, made the Christmas bed, made the bed really nice, and I was like, are you hungry? And he was like, yeah, I'm hungry. And I said, what do you want? And he goes, not Mexican. <laughs> I go, okay. And I didn't know why he said that. And so, because I wasn't even thinking Mexican, you know. Oh, well, he had had, he went to Verde last night with his girlfriend and had Mexican. Okay, but what I didn't know. Well, at lunch, he told me when we were at dinner, I said, did you have lunch? And he doesn't usually eat lunch. And he was like, yeah, he was like, um, something about, something to do with like the work Christmas party had had like, this Joe's Grill catered it and it was like left over and so he made like himself like a burrito bowl like Qdoba but it was not Qdoba, not Qdoba, like Chipotle but it wasn't Chipotle and I'm like okay. So he was like so yeah I'm not like uh, I don't want Mexican because he had had it last night and today. So um, oh you guys you know what I want to do actually hold on a second. Because Tanya and I were talking about this the other day. So I'm going to go through here. Hold on just a second, okay? I'm going to have to stop this and change the battery really quick. Okay. I have a surprise for you. I'll be right back. And then I'll finish my story. Okay, I had to finish my... Um, I had to finish. I had to change my battery before I showed you guys your... Um, special. Are you ready? <laughs> okay, here we go. So, this is like the Fisher's department that has like, Fisher's department. It's just called the Fisher's, I don't know what this is called, but these are all the Christmas lights that they have this year. And Tanya was like, oh my god, they're so pretty when we were driving by here the other day. So, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go through here and I am gonna show you guys the Christmas lights, because aren't they so pretty? Look at all that. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Is it out of focus? Please tell me it's not out of focus. Good tidings they come to you and your kin. Good tidings for Christmas. Okay. I'm just gonna have to hold the camera while I'm going. Isn't this so pretty? So this is like the Fisher's Police Department. On my right-hand side, they have all of these tall buildings here. They have apartments and stuff like that. So, Fisher's uh, 
fire department, Fishers, city service municipals. Okay, I don't know what that means. And then back here is the library. This is actually the library that I used to go to back in the day. My roommate and I used to go there. And then the fire department is over here. I think this is the fire department. But isn't this so pretty? This is like where everything, Fishers, Indiana is. This is where this little pavilion thing here is where Tanya and I came a couple years ago. Well, she had wolf stock here, um, which is like this dog thing. And then they had this, um, oh, why can't I think of his name? Elton John impersonator that we all danced to when we came with my sponsor. Is that not so pretty? Look at those trees. And the post office is up here to the right. I think this might be the fire station. I don't know, none of these things are, oh yeah, this is the fire station right here, you can see. Look at this fire station, number 91. Look at that, it's a big fire station. Isn't that so pretty? She's a maniac, maniac on the floor. <laughs> Did you guys love that movie back in the day? I loved that movie. Alex has had two friends, really close friends that live in this building right here. Our one friend that lived to Miami, or moved to Miami, she used to live in that building. And they used to go over here to this little bar or restaurant all the time that's called Luvino. Aren't these lights so pretty? And there you can see it, it's right there. Luvino. <laughs> Oh, too close for comfort. So that was what I wanted to show you because when Tani and I drove through here the other day, um, come on now, focus. Tani was like, look at the lights. And I'm like, they're the same lights they have every year, Tanya Jane. Come on, focus. Hold on a second. Okay. But I was like, they're the same lights that they have every year, Tanya Jane. She's like, I know, but they're so pretty. She was like, there's these like lights that line the street. Like you can see, like I'm about to pass some right here. Do you, hold on a second. Do you see these like right here? They've been up for like a month and a half. Tanya does not live too far from here. So the, she probably sees those on a pretty daily basis. She goes, oh my God, the lights are so pretty. <laughs> I go, Tanya, what is going on? You act like this is the first time you've ever seen him and stuff like that. I mean, I'm glad that my friend gets that excited about Christmas decorations and stuff, you know. So anyway, but it just kind of cracked me up a little bit. So anyway, Alex and um, I was like, so let's go to dinner. So we went, I, I said, you want Puccini's? And he was like, yeah, let's go to Puccini's. So we went to Puccini's. <laughs> which we hadn't been to in forever. And it was packed, because I wanted a booth. And when we went in, because I always like to sit in a booth, a little unknown fact about Peter, like I, I like booths. <laughs> I don't like tables in the middle of the room. First of all, I can't see around me, and I feel like people are looking at me. And second of all, um, I just like booths. <laughs> they're just, I, they're cozy or something. I don't know what it is I like about them. So anyway. There was only one booth. Puccini's is not a big restaurant. There's like six booths on one side, six booths on the other, and then like tables in the middle. Well, every booth except for one was taken and it was the one closest to the door. And Alex goes, do you really want to sit in a booth? Cause that's the one by the door and it's going to be cold and I don't want to sit there. And I said, okay, well we can sit wherever you want. And he was like, okay. So we sat in the middle of the room so that everybody could stare at us. <laughs> I was noticing that it was kind of funny how the tables were set up. Cause they were kind of set up where that you're like literally staring at a booth. Cause they were kind of at an angle, you know? So anyway, I love Puccini's. It's just like this local little Italian place. There's a couple of them here in Indianapolis, just like four or five of them. And they're all owned by the same family, I think. And um, it's just like pasta. Alex gets pizza there. Um, great salad, starters, appetizers. They serve wine and like the little glasses and you know, all that kind of stuff. And it's just really great food. So I always, always, um, get like this Diavolo pasta when I'm there on like linguine. I always get like the same thing. And I was like, I'm trying something different today. 
And all day I had been kind of craving this four cheese pasta from Cheesecake Factory, but I didn't want to go to Cheesecake Factory because I knew that there would be a line a mile along, especially in the holidays with people shopping and Christmas parties and Christmas dinners and all that stuff. So I was like, forget it. I'm not going to Cheesecake Factory tonight. So I was like looking through the menu and I was like, Alex is like, well, what are you going to get? Because he always gets a cheese pizza. And so he got a cheese pizza out of water and I got, well, my pasta came with a salad. They brought a salad for him too. And he's like, I didn't order a salad. And I was like, she was like, well, do you want it? And he was like, no. And she was like, okay. She was like, we made two salads. So this girl, let me just tell you, they had one waitress on the floor. They had one girl hostessing. And, and it's also, there were like at any given time, four or five people standing in the carry out because they call in orders and they just come right into the restaurant and carry it out. So at any given time, there was four or five people at the register just waiting. They had the one server on the floor and then who knew Alex because she was like, did you, you used to go to the Starbucks at such and such? And he was like, yeah. And she was like, oh my God, I used to work there. So um, one server on the floor for 12 tables, you guys. Well, I think it was like 15 when we left. And let me just tell you, okay, and then there were two, people, two guys in the kitchen cooking because you can see the whole kitchen. When I mean to tell you that these four people hustled their ASSs, let me just tell you, okay? Alex looked at her and he goes, she was like walking away, he goes, I hope she banks tonight. He goes on tips because um, he said she is like really, really hustling. And I mean, I was so impressed. She was so sweet. She stayed so calm. She didn't get angry. This one guy like walked in, didn't wait to be seated. He like sat down at a booth that wasn't clear, this older guy. And he, he came over and she was like real friendly. She's like, what can I get you? And he goes, you haven't even come over for water yet. And I, if it was me, I would have been like, sir, you literally just sat yourself in a section that hasn't been cleaned yet, but okay, what can I help for you? And she's like, I am so sorry about that. She's like, we're a little busy tonight. She was like, let me see what I can get. And he goes, yeah. He was like, I want some water. And I was like, and so then she brought like the water like right away. I mean, she was so good. And so anyway, um, and then the, uh, this other girl that was like hostessing, but she was like also bringing food out. But when we sat down, the server said, she goes, I don't have a bus for tonight. And she goes, so I'm sorry, but it's going to take a little bit longer. We were like, we're not in any hurry. You know, don't stress out over us. And, um, I mean, they were really, they were, and they were all like, all four of them were probably under the age of like 24 running this whole restaurant, you know? And I was just, I was like, damn, I'm impressed. So, um, I got, and I asked her which one I was going to get basil pesto over angel hair pasta. Um, their salads are incredible and they like come in this like glass bowl. It's like this deep and it's like this just, you know, and, um, but it really is like that deep, you guys. And then it comes with all this cut up lettuce and black olives, which are my favorite part. I don't know why. And like mozzarella cheese and all kinds of stuff on it. It's really good. Big tomatoes. Well, tomatoes that are like, you know, small tomatoes, but cut into like slices. And then their ranch dressing is made in house and it's so delicious. So I was like, should I get that? Or should I get this? It was called like this four cheese. What was it called? Oh, Quattro Formaggio, which is like this pizza that they have at Bass Bass. And she's like, I love the Quattro Formaggio, but with this different sauce because it's spicier. And I said, because it, it's like baked penne pasta. And I was like, that, I'm sold. That's what I'll do. So that's what I had. It was absolutely delicious. I actually, <laughs> I left my leftovers in the back of the car, which I always do. But I didn't have that many leftovers. Um, just like this little small, this little small container, you know. If I could reach it, I would show you guys, but I can't. Um, and then what else? Like I said, Alex had a pizza and he put like the red pepper stuff over at the end. He's like, shh, 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 shh. <laughs> he puts it over the whole pizza. It cracks me up. Like so much of it. And we just sat there and talked and, um, yeah, we had a good time. It was fun. But we got home and I was so tired. And I was talking to Valerie, so when I got home, um, so I was gonna finish up talking to her and then lay down. I was like exhausted, having been up since like 4.30 in the morning at this point, it was like eight, right? And I was like, I have got to lay down. I was so excited to lay down with the dogs and Alex, and then he got into bed and 
he was uh, playing his, his video game. <laughs> he was playing his game, um, I was gonna say toxic. He was, well that, he was playing his game Township and um, so then he just like turned it off and put his phone down and I said, are you going to bed? I mean, it was like 8.15 or something like that at this point. And he said, and I was already falling asleep. And he goes, I'm just really tired. He goes, I was going to watch the new episode of Sex in the City, which is, I don't know what he, he said, what it was called. Um, but he goes, I was going to watch that. He goes, but I'm so tired. He goes, I think I'm just going to go to bed. And he went to bed too. So he and the dogs and I settled in. I thought I was going to do this whole vlog tonight talking about my sobriety birthday being tomorrow. It feels weird. Like, I was thinking about this tonight. I was like, and I, I think I feel differently about it year to year because it's like, well, it's like kind of officially my sobriety birthday, but I usually consider it when I woke up, on the, when I wake up on the 17th. That's how I usually feel about it. I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe last year I was like, midnight is my birthday. But... feels good. I made it. <laughs> you know, it's crazy to think that like a week or two or three ago when I was talking about like how this period is difficult for me, that I was like, if I should make it there, right? And I was like, which I'm probably not going to relapse between now and then, but like if I should, you know, because we don't borrow time in recovery. And it's strange thinking I don't know why this is just occurring to me now that I say that today at 27 years sober, but how difficult it was just for me to get through a day sober or a week sober when I first got sober, you know, it was so hard. And it's not just time either because, you know, like I was sober in treatment and then I got out of treatment and I really struggled like at home with having any kind of independence you know I say this a lot my one my one regret about that experience is that they really wanted me to go to a halfway house <clears throat> and I'm not saying that people don't use in halfway houses people definitely do <clears throat> but you know I had friends of mine that had amazing experiences in halfway houses and it made some lifelong friends and stuff like that and I wish I had gone to a halfway house. I wish I had. I wish I hadn't been afraid of what that experience was like. I think I was really scared of communal living with, like, all straight guys. Um, because I experienced that a little bit in rehab, and that wasn't, like, a fun experience for me. Um... I know that sounds crazy, but it was just another experience where I felt different from everybody else, you know? Um, and I think that was like the one thing. It really wasn't so much about like, I'm gonna be on my own, or I am absolutely not going to a halfway house. And we didn't even have that many halfway houses in Indianapolis at that time. I think we had like one or two. And I just was, I remember the doctor saying, I highly suggest he goes to a halfway house. And I just was like, that. I will do anything, but that's one thing I'm not doing. And I really think it was about my fear of, I don't know what I thought was going to happen. I, I really don't, you know. stretches on forever tonight. It's like clear outside. It's so clear. You can see the stars. And it doesn't seem windy. It just seems real calm outside. It's so pretty. Well, tomorrow I'll probably talk more, I'm sure, about my sobriety. I think it feels a little weird to me this year, too, because it's like I'm not getting my... I could go to a meeting tomorrow night and get my token, but I'm going to wait till my home group that's what I do usually is get it at my home group and my sponsor, even though that's not her home group meeting. She comes there. She gives it to me. Um, and so it's, I think it seems kind of weird that like I have to, like I'm waiting a couple days to get my token or something like that, you know, 
Um, tomorrow night we're going out for Maddie's birthday, our friend Aaron's daughter that graduates from high school tomorrow. And that'll be fun. I'm excited about that. I was looking online at the restaurant that we're going to tomorrow night. Because Alex and I have never been there before. And it's predominantly like like meat and seafood kind of place. Like they don't really have um, a lot of vegetarian options. And Alex is like, well, what are you going to get? And I was like, a wedge salad with no bacon. <laughs> Baked potato. He goes, they don't have mac and cheese. I go, I don't want to just eat sides tomorrow night. I feel like carb factory. I kind of do like, I don't get baked potatoes very often. When my aunt was still alive and she was cooking, like the last Christmas she didn't cook, but when she would cook, on Christmas Eve, she would make like uh, beef wellington. And is that what it was, beef wellington? Beef tenderloin. Why can I not remember all of a sudden? I'm gonna have to call Caroline tomorrow and ask her. But then she would make each of us a twice baked potato. And I loved that. Like going to somebody's house and having, a, you know, your own twice baked potato and everything. And then she would make asparagus. Alex loves asparagus. I love asparagus too. When I was a little kid, asparagus was one of my um, favorite, like, mushed up little, to you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, foods. And so my mom's friend used to always call me uh, Mr. Asparagus Man. Isn't that so funny? I was Mr. Asparagus Man when I was a little kid. <clears throat> I'm in my head thinking about this because that was one of my mom's oldest friends from high school. And they were friends from high school to the time that my mom died. But her friend, who had had a lot happen, moved back after several years of being, well, like 30 years of being gone or something like that, 40 years of being gone. She moved back to Indianapolis to be closer to her family. My mom had two friends that did that, actually, from high school. And um, the whole time that my mom was sick, she never came and saw her. And she didn't come to the funeral, and she didn't come to the viewing. And, like, she and my mom talked quite a bit, and I never heard from her. And so one day, like, I don't know, I saw her number on something of my mom's or something, and so I called her, and I was like, hey, I just wanted to see how you're doing. She's like, oh, my God, it's so good to hear from you. I can't believe that you're calling me, and she was so excited to hear from me and stuff. And I said something like, you know, I didn't even hear from you. Like, I don't know, do you know that my mom passed away? And she's like, yeah, I'm really sorry to hear that. And, and I was like, okay, so I'm kind of confused. Like, you guys were so close. Like, you didn't come to see my mom when she was sick. You didn't come to the viewing or the funeral. And she was kind of taken back, like, that I had even asked her. And I was like, this is a close friend of my mom's. Like, I'm going to ask, right? And she was like, I can't even remember what she said, but she came up with some lame excuse. And um, and then she was like, would you please come over and we could sit down and talk about your mom and I miss her so much and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, yeah, sure. <clears throat> and then I called her one other time and we were like making plans on the phone to go do something. And she was real dismissive to me on the phone. She was like, okay. She was like, well, we need to make these plans now. She was like, because I have this and this and this to do and this and this. And I was like, you know, I said, why don't you call me when your schedule frees up a little bit? Um, Cause you're obviously a lot more busy than I am, you know, at whatever, doing nothing into town and not even visiting your close friend when she's dying or go to her funeral. I was pissed about it. I was bitter about it. I thought it was rude, you know? And so she goes, okay, I will do that. Never heard from her again. This was one of my mom's closest friends. Closest friends. Like, her husband and my dad and mom all lived in, like, Chicago together and stuff like that. 
my mom was friends with her in high school. I mean, one of my mom's closest friends in high school. And I asked her on the phone, too, because she was really good friends with Diane, uh, my mom's friend that died three years before my mom. Diane was the one that lived on Beaver Island. And I said something about, like, well, did you know about Diane? And she was like, yes, Peter, your mother told me. And, like, real kind of, like, patronizing. And I was like, okay. Like, I just, I don't know. It was interesting to me. Because the way that my mom acted like their friendship was was not like what I was getting on the phone, you know, whatsoever. I don't know. And I'm not saying that anybody has to go to somebody's funeral, and I'm not saying that, but, like, I think if one of my dearest friends who I was closest with their kids, or close with their kids as well, like, if they, their, my friend was dying, I think I would either A, go to the hospital, B, go to the funeral, or C, at least send a card or call. <laughs> Don't you think that's kind of weird? I do. I'm not patting my own back because I don't think it's that extravagant, but I do that today, you know? Anyway, God love her. Not too long ago, I was thinking about her, actually. And, um... You know what I remember? This is why I ended up calling her, was because in my mom's will, she had written, like, this really ambiguous thing about just give some of my books and special things to friends of mine that love me or something like that. And so then later, the attorney, uh, the attorney's office, like, called me, this is a whole story on its own, which I'll tell another time, called me, and they had had, like, moving offices, they found a letter my mom had written to me, and I thought this letter was going to have the answers to the world in it, and it didn't have anything in there, because she had written it in 1990, the year that I graduated from high school. But in there, she said about this friend, and please give her something, because she's so, she, she named, like, three friends, and she was like, um, Diane, this person, and another person from high school, and she was like, because they mean so much to me. And I think that's why I reached out to her. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> it's my sobriety birthday. Does seem surreal, though. Well, I'll share some stories about it tomorrow night. I did this whole video today, though, on my Peter Dust Stuff channel. I'm talking about the very last day. And, like, I got so many comments and people are like, I love listening to this story every year. And I was like, do I tell this exact same story every year? <laughs> That's where the haters are like, he told it different this year. He didn't get his facts straight. He didn't keep his lies straight. I got like one fact off wrong, you know? Because I said I was drinking like a beer instead of a 40 or something like that. <laughs> it was 27 years ago. Give me a break. My friend Tanya, I said, you know, you want to know the sign of a true liar is when they get their stories, they tell their stories exactly the same every single time. Oh Lord. Anyway, I'm extremely grateful today for being sober. I'm extremely grateful for, for my sobriety and my recovery and just my life. You know, I have such a wonderful life. I do. And um, I'm so thankful for it. I'm just happy today. I'm just happy tonight. And I'm happy because I love you guys. So I'm going to get off here and I'm going to listen to my audiobook now. Um, and I love you guys so much. So uh if nobody else has told you this today, who, I, I love you. I love you. And whatever you're going through in your life right now, you're going to be okay. This too shall pass. And for anybody that needs to hear that, it's the truth though. Things are going to get better. Hopefully. But I believe that they will. And I love you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya!